What is up, guys? Welcome back to Talking Nutrition. Today is a solo episode, episode 43, where we're going to talk about evening and morning routines. Something I'm very passionate about, something I've been playing around with for the past three almost years. And <laughs> I think there's a lot of stuff, again, you know, we always talk about this stuff, but like, there's a lot that kind of gets taken a little too far these days. And, you know, we hear from, you know, the Uberman podcast where you have to get that direct sunlight in the morning. And then there's the eye pass. And then there's the, there's so much stuff right now these days, you know, you got the infrared saunas and there's grounding and there's so much shit, you know, which I think there's a hundred percent, like there's, there's definitely a time and place for a lot of stuff that we're going to talk about today. And I've tried a lot. We're going to get into what I tried kind of like what I learned. But most importantly, what I want you to do here is realize that all these things are going to be individual to you. You know what I mean? Some people really want to have like a, a ritual almost where their whole morning is planned out and they have like a bunch of different things. Someone else just kind of wants to get started and or maybe they just want to sleep more, you know, because if I can give you one tip right off the bat, right? Never sacrifice sleep, whether that's sleep quality, sleep, you know, quantity, we want to make sure that you get enough sleep. So if you're currently in a spot where you're not getting enough, hey, maybe we don't want to take these routines too far. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, before we get into the episode, uh, this episode is brought to you by Odyssey Coaching Systems. Wanted to remind you too, that uh, alongside of like the one-on-one -on -one coaching that we do and the group coaching that we started back in April, we do also have a free Facebook group where I do hop on live every single week on Thursdays, quick little weekly training. We have a new free workout program in there, which are free to download, right? You get a direct link right there. We have an average weight tracker. We have a habit tracker as well as a cheat sheet with specific habits. Uh, what else do we have? A meal framework that, that's going to help you build meals. We have the definitive protein cheat sheet with a tutorial really showing you like, hey, this is a day of 150 grams of protein. I'll show you like how simple it really is. And there's a bunch more in there. So you want to check that out. I'll link it down below in the show notes. Now let's get into the episode, right? Uh, what are we going to talk about? Morning routines, evening routines, kind of like how to set yourself up for success for the day, every single day, right? How to stay in the moment, but also how to reflect on where you're currently at. I think routines are really important. Um, I don't think we need a full hour. Like, you know, like we'll, we'll get into that in a sec, but I've de definitely taken it too far, um, you know, a little while ago. So we'll talk about my experiences, but I think it's going to help you be proactive. Like that's the thing here, right? Anytime I record a new video training for my clients in our database of video trainings, <laughs> a lot of times it comes back to planning. It's, it's a mindset of, Hey, what can I do now today? To set myself up for success tomorrow, how can I save myself some time, some effort, some energy? Your future self is really going to thank you there. But we don't always think about that, right? We go about our day, time flies, and then you know, by the end of the week, it's like, oh, fuck, yeah, I was supposed to work on my protein, on my steps, or I was going to go to the gym, but I, I didn't go at all, right? So we want to be proactive here instead of reactive. So we'll talk about morning routines, evening routines, why they're important, Finding what's best for you, that's a big one because it's going to be completely different for everyone, I think, uh, but also very important, you know, things to consider, just stuff to consider and base your decisions on. I will also give you specific practices uh, that I played around with, other ones that I've just, you know, read about. Um, and then after this episode, I want you to just go about your week, this week, right, and try some shit out. Try journaling, try meditating, whatever it is you think. It's going to work best for you. Something that resonates with you and just pick one thing to try out, you know, maybe two, but like, don't push it too far. Don't think I'm going to go from not doing any like specific routines before at bedtime or after, uh, from that to kind of like a hundred different things. Just this dude, I forgot his name. I saw, I mean, I, I really hate the word biohacking, <laughs> but I saw this biohacker on YouTube, I think. And he was doing literally, I think it was 150 things or something crazy in the morning, just in the morning, right? And I understand, I understand, like from a content creation perspective and, you know, 
showing people some extreme stuff and all that. But we got to re- remember too, like we we're normal people. I mean, for the most part, <laughs> you know what I mean? But like we, ha- we have jobs, we have, you know, you, maybe you study, maybe you have kids, there's a lot of shit going on. Maybe you don't have that much time, right? So how do we figure out what's going to go be the best for you? You know, no. Why I think routines are important. You get to sit down, you get to plan, prepare and reflect as well on your day to day, right? This is the thing. We don't always feel like this. We don't always want to sit down, spend some time, even thinking of, hey, I, do I need to go shopping? What do I want to eat, etc. Those kind of things. It's so key to be, once again, proactive instead of reactive, which maybe taking this into kind of like, for example, tracking, which we do know a lot of people kind of struggle with in the beginning, is because they're kind of randomly collecting some macros here and there. Well, guess what? What if we're proactive here? We sit down, we plan, we think, okay, what's my my daily protein? How many meals do I want to have? What are my favorite protein foods? Let's just break it down, right? And like I said, hey, if you want me to do it for you, join a free Facebook group because <laughs> I'm literally going to like show you exactly how to do that uh, with different ex- or different examples. Sorry. So check that out. Anyway, um, so you get to sit down, plan, kind of like see, hey, what's coming up for the week, right? Meaning you're going to be more productive. You're going to get more done. Life is going to be a little bit more structured, which I do think can be nice, right? It's going to remove stress. It's going to make things easier. You might even be sleeping better and a lot more, <laughs> you know, there's a ton of benefits there. It keeps you in check. It allows you to be proactive instead of reactive. That's that's the main purpose of me recording recording this episode, right? I want you to be in the moment to be successful. Like we, we need to be aware of what's going on. How can we improve, right? So morning routines is going to set the tone for the day. It could be a five minute thing, simple as, hey, I'm just going to have a glass of water and make my coffee and I'll just get started. Or it could be hour long ritual. Let me take a quick sip of water. So it could be hour long ritual. And I've done that. I've made that mistake. I will call it a mistake because I was spending a lot of my most important time, right? My most productive time getting ready. So you want to play with this, right? Okay. Most of your preparing for the day itself kind of happens there, right? In the early morning, which by the way, I do also like to do in the evening. Simply said, you're setting yourself up for success. Tomorrow, the next couple of days, the rest of the week, rest of the month even, right? You want to know what's coming up. Instead of kind of like just kind of going about your day, about your week, and it's, it's all random, you know? Evening routines. You're probably super busy. Maybe you're even stressed or yeah, you know, you have a lot of things to think about and a lot of things to do. And this evening routine is going to kind of help you slow down. It's going to help you prepare for sleep. That's a big one because a lot of people, including my clients too, tend to be maybe even like they're, they're in bed on time, you know, but then they're lying there, eyes wide open, their heads still spinning, you know thinking about this and that, and this needs to happen, and I forgot about this, and this people, or this person, sorry, (laughs) pissed me off at work, and then there was traffic, and then someone, you know, we are always kind of like going. Of course you can sleep then, right? And if that stress is high, right, we want to do something for that. So I want to help you wind down here. Now, this is also where I think it's a great moment to reflect on a day Look at, hey, okay, what, what did I do today? Did I do the thing I said I would, right? Did I go to the gym? Did I track my food, etc. right? Was that the best version of myself? Was it kind of being a dick to someone? And was there anything, right, that I could do better? I think it's, it's uncomfortable to sit down with your, your own thoughts. And it's uncomfortable to create awareness around our weaknesses. It's also the number one thing that's going to help you improve. And I'm speaking, speaking from experience here, like the, the main reason I've been trying to play around with morning and evening routines is because I also have shit to work through. You know what I mean? And that's an ongoing thing. We're never done, guys. We're never done. So this is where you reflect, but also kind of look into, hey, tomorrow what's coming up, right? I like to do this from, you know, on the business side of things. Okay, tomorrow, okay, I got to do my check-ins. I got to write the newsletter. There's all these kind of different things, moving parts. It's kind of nice to kind of set yourself up for success the next day already. You're just going to be more present. And if anything, it can almost act like a like an off switch for the day. 
because now you know, okay, I'm done, right? End of my work day, did my journaling, whatever, I reflected, right? Wrote shit down, my to-do list for tomorrow. I'm good, now I can relax. Now I can be present with my family, with my friends, and go to bed, right? Now, let's talk about morning routines. I read this book from, uh, it's by Robin Sharma, The 5 AM Club. Love the book. This is when I, you know, because I, I always told myself, like, I'm not a morning person, you know? I always told myself that. And guess what? If you tell yourself you're not a morning person, you will not be a morning person. But I read that book by recommendation. <laughs> and it really inspired me. I will say that. I really enjoyed that book. And it got me to get up at six back then. And I think it's only since maybe half a year, year ago now, that I started getting up at five in the morning. And also, guys, there's nothing magic about five. Some people that I know get up at four. You know, but what I can say is there is something very special to those first early couple hours where the world is kind of still asleep, right? And I mean, I love it, especially if I go for a morning walk around that time and the city is asleep and like it's just water, like seagulls right now at this time of the year. And it's great. I love it, honestly. But okay. I read that book, right? And without getting really into the book, I ended up spending, I want to say at least enough, like probably even more sometimes because I would also go on a very long walk, which I do still think is an incredible thing to do for your health. And I am still very big on walks and I take multiple walks every single day. But I ended up spending an hour, sometimes plus, right, of my most valuable time where you could actually get, you can get a whole lot done, right, in the morning. I was spending an hour just kind of like getting ready for the day. I was doing some meditation, some journaling, and then had my coffee, my morning walk, and this and that, right? A lot of shit. I was reading, etc. And those are all important things, don't get me wrong. But again, it was a lot of time, it was an hour. So that's, that's one end of the extreme. Then on the other end, there's someone like Alex Hermosi, who is an amazing resource, by the way, I really like his stuff. But he basically says, hey, you know, make a cup of coffee and just get started with your day. Like, don't fuck around. Like, get going. Right? You want to minimize the time from waking up to getting started. You got to, like, just go. Right? And I like that, too. And I've tried that out as well. And I've kind of played with both, to be honest with you. Like, I've, I've just kind of, like, gone from, from <laughs> the one hour long, like, ritual almost to, okay, let me now try this out. And guess what? Now... I kind of base my morning on what need, what I feel like needs to get done. It's a little bit more intuitive. And what I will say, there are some staples that I will always do every single morning. That is journaling and meditating. Uh, well, I'm drinking my coffee and a big fucking glass of water right away. But other than that, it really just depends. Right now, I'd much rather, st you know, get started ASAP after covering, you know, the most important stuff, then spending an hour, you know, getting ready. And I will say you do feel great then, you know, but still, uh, I'd much rather just kind of like get going. So I think it's less about like do everything and all the things and the infrared saunas and the ice bath and then go for a run and do this many push-ups and go ground and, and do all this stuff, right? And it's instead of doing all those things, just try to find what's good for you, like what works for you. That could be one thing, could be five, whatever. Think of what's sustainable for me. Things to consider. Uh, again, right? Never sacrifice sleep for just more stuff. If you are not sleeping, let's call it six, seven, eight plus, right? Hours per night. That's maybe the number one thing to do. So maybe, right? We don't want to add the, the morning run or etc right? Just stay in bed a little longer. I'd much rather see you do that. Again, it's a personal decision though, but I wouldn't sacrifice my sleep for that. That's going to be the number one thing that's going to help you be productive, feel good and get shit done. But start your day with the mindset of, hey, like what can I do to just become like 1% better today? And that's one thing I want you to think about though. 
whatever you do in the morning, even if that's a five minute moment where you just enjoy your own little personal space where you don't do shit for anyone else but yourself, right? Even if it's just that, try to set yourself up for success. Be aware of what needs to happen and how you can be the best version of yourself. Not everyone's a morning person, right? But you can become a morning person if you want that. And again, it can be a really nice moment to have some quiet time, some alone time. I know a lot of people, you know, especially if you have kids or, you know, et cetera, you've got a busy job, whatever, you got to get going. A lot of people don't get that valuable alone time, and we all need that. Thing is, these days, when we do get some alone time, we spend that time, you know, on YouTube, on TikTok, etc., like scrolling, getting that dopamine hit, right? So possible practices for your mornings, you could uh, just simply set the goals for the day, quick to-do list, you know, one to three most important things. I've seen people do five, right? Um, I like to do kind of like my number one task that has to get done. And then I got three also important ones. And then of course, there's way more. But as long as those couple are kind of like taken care of, I win the day, right? I'm a big fan of gratitude uh, journaling or just journaling in general. I think it's huge. It's it's going to help us um, become more, more grateful and be more aware of our own thoughts and stuff, right? So that's a good one to look into. Um, meditation is huge, right? Get hydrated in the morning. Get a good, nice little breakfast going. I think even though I think calling breakfast like the most important you know meal of the day maybe 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 not depends but i do still think it's probably a good idea to get some in your system before you get started with your busy day it could be a shake it could be something you know something light whatever you want to do but i do like to see my clients get something in the morning um movement right you could go for a quick walk you could for, go for a run a workout but that's also going to be personal morning walks are huge they are going to help you manage stress and you are going to support your circadian rhythm by simply getting some sunlight in the morning so if you can right that's going to be a big one. Oh, this is actually a huge one number one tip i can give you and this goes for evening routines too Try not to use your phone for at least kind of like the, the 30 minutes right after you wake up and the 30 minutes before you sleep. Preferably longer, but if you can do that, if you can delay that phone use, right? Because I've seen so many people, right? Wake up, and, and I'm guilty of this too, you know? Wake up and you start scrolling right away. That's the first thing you do. You're like a drug addict, you know? It's a serious issue, I think. And it's going to take a lot of your mental energy away from you right off the bat. Instead of allowing yourself to have even five or 10 minutes just to fill your own cup instead of that you already allow yourself to kind of get distracted by the, the social media shit right you can also just simply have your coffee kind of you know have some breakfast just be present in the morning kind of slow down etc um, and it's also a good moment to take your morning supplements now getting into the evening routines evening routines Again, right? Uh, what's going to be best for you it just really just depends. Right? I don't want you to do like a million different things if you don't have that much time anyway. At the end of the day, pun intended, <laughs> it's about finding what you can kind of stick to and what's actually going to help you. Hey, maybe instead of scrolling, right? You pick up a book. If there's one thing that I've been benefiting from massively the last couple of years, it's reading more and it, the, what you read of course depends but for me i truly believe for me and like as a person i think the most like the biggest changes i've made and that i am going through comes from reading and i'm a, I'm a huge fan of reading right now i just ordered like six other books like, like that came in last week like i'm a big fan of it I'm, I'm making time for that now i make a point of reading something every single day every morning every evening they're different books though. In the morning, it's kind of like more self-development, uh, you know, work-related stuff. And in the evening, hey, I'm trying to like not think about work. No, I actually read some, you know, different stuff, basically. That's not personal development or anything coaching or nutrition related. You know, currently I'm, I'm reading The Witcher. I bought the whole series. And it's, it's just kind of nice to read something that's written to be kind of like a good story, right? That is also stimulating the, the creative part of the brain. And like I said, that is for change, like not 
mindset or training or nutrition related, you know? Um, so if you are into kind of like fantasy books, like it's, it's maybe a good thing. And it's cool too. Like if you want to get into writing, for example, um, it could be beneficial to actually get, you know, read some good stuff there. But okay. So, um, in terms of the evening, right? The biggest one I've seen do wonders is just removing that phone 30, preferably 60 minutes before bedtime. It's not the most exciting thing. I know that it's, it's not the thing that's going to be, you know, the, the first thing you think of that you want to do to start your evening routine, but it's, it's a huge one, right? Then again, self-reflection, you want to sit down, you want to get uncomfortable a little bit, like dive into, or, you know, dig a little deeper, like into your personal struggles and your roadblocks that have been coming up and the, the stuff that didn't go that great today because here's the thing, tomorrow you have another chance, you know? And if anything, and I mentioned this too, like over and over again in, in our group coaching program with our one-on-one our -on -one clients in our free group, hey, you gotta show up every fucking day. Like the only way you can fail in this whole health and, and fitness thing is by just stopping altogether. And so many people do that because it's the New Year's resolution and one day it doesn't go as planned and it's like, oh, fuck it, you know? You got one flat tire and you, get out of the car and you yell at the car and you stab all the three other tires and you kick the car instead of accepting it. Oh fuck. Okay. We got, a, we got a flat tire. Okay. Let me now be resourceful. Let me figure this shit out. Right. Let me see. Do we have a spare, do we have a spare tire? Can I fix this myself? Do I need to ask for help, etc.? Let's make this shit work so that we can then move on. Right. I think that's probably the, the best idea the best way to go about it right because only then can you move forward instead of making things worse and ignoring it altogether we need to do the uncomfortable thing yeah of, of reflecting on our own shit you know and i know that it's easier said than done it's it's not an easy thing but we do need to take that first step and be proactive here it's going to be essential for your like long-term success you know and we, we already do like our weekly check-in with our clients. And you can do this for yourself if you don't work with a coach, right? Do your weekly check-in with yourself. Look at what's going well, what needs more work, what are my biggest wins, how will I get a little bit better next week, and how will I do that, right? Like how, that's a very important one. But I'd like you to take that into almost like a daily thing where maybe every day you kind of set yourself up for success in the morning. And in the evening, you reflect, hey, did I do the thing I said I was going to, right? Was it the best version of myself, etc.? Almost do like a mini check-in, right? Because then you are in the moment. And I really like to combine this with like a habit tracker or something. Like, hey, like, let's make sure that every day we have a touch point where we know that we're on the right track. Now, other possible practices for your evening could be um, taking your evening routines, or sorry, your evening uh, supplements, of course. I'm a big fan of magnesium there uh, to help with sleep and L-theanine as well, big ones. Or just have like a like a chamomile, like lavender tea or something, like nothing too crazy. Just allow yourself to just chill and calm down, you know what I mean? Um, do some reflection, journal, meditate, do some breath work, take a hot shower, hot bath, whatever you want to do. But then make your room cold and dark. That's a big one too. Try to cut technology, remove screens from the bedroom. Um, and what I do like as well is preparing your breakfast in the morning. So when I make overnight oats, right, it's great because it's already there, sitting in the fridge, ready to go in the morning. Maybe prepare your clothes, maybe get your gym bag done, you know, just so that everything is good to go so that that next morning, really all you got to do is just wake up, do the few things that you want to do, and then get started. You know what I mean? So once again, the, the mindset of what can I do now in this moment today to save myself some time and energy and effort tomorrow, the rest of the week, right? Think about that. Also remember, never sacrifice sleep, right? Just for another fancy, like ice bath hypey thing, you know? And again, I'm not against ice baths at all. I think a lot of people should be doing that stuff. Because it's a method of getting uncomfortable on purpose and sitting with that uncomfortable feeling. And I think that's huge for personal development and just getting, you know, building character. So I'm not against that stuff, but I will say 
the more shit you try to add to your evenings or mornings, the more difficult it's it's going to be for you to stick to, the more things you have to think about, you know? Um, and it does take away from maybe other important things like sleep, like being present with your family, etc., with your partner, you know? What I do these days, my evening routine, is I just try to be in bed like half an hour before I want to fall asleep. And I just read a book. I have this, uh, and I love it. It sounds silly maybe, but I have this sunrise and sunset uh, lamp. It's from Philips. I forgot the name. Um, but you can set a timer basically where, hey, you set it on sunset, and I put it on 30 minutes. I begin to read, right? And as I read, it kind of like the, the, the light like dims out, you know? It gets a little bit more like... Uh, like dark reds, like sun, sunset colors, you know, and I swear every single time I just, I just pass out like 15 minutes or something. And then in the morning, it kind of comes in as a sunrise. I really like that. Again, I, it sounds kind of silly, you know, but that's been one that's really helped me both wake up, but then also fall asleep. Big fan of that. Um, but yeah, play around with this stuff. That's all I can say, you know? Don't expect to to go online or listen to this podcast, like even our shit, you know, but like don't listen to something and then just like run with it. Instead, I want you to kind of be like, hey, you know, okay, let me let me try something this week. Let me let me maybe try journaling and give that a full month, you know? Let me try to prepare my breakfast and put my phone away and maybe read a book. Honestly, do do whatever the fuck you want to, you know, but like figure out what works for you. Give it some time to figure, you know, your stuff out. And again, right. Also here, just like with nutrition, it's usually the basic stuff that really works. Now that is going to be it for this week. I will be back next week with Christine, as well as our friend, Sam Miller. Very excited for that episode. It's uh, been really cool to get more guests on the, the podcast. So looking forward to that one. As always, I hope that you learned something new today. I hope that this is something that's going to inspire you to maybe try something new this week, right? But put this into action. That's what I want you to do. Don't just like listen to this stuff and be like, okay, sounds like a great idea, but I'm not going to do anything with it. (laughs) You know, that's, that's how it often goes with a lot of stuff online. No, I want you to kind of like take one thing and kind of like try to put it into action and see how you do with it. Now, lastly... Once again, as I mentioned earlier, we do have our free Facebook group as well, where we do have a free training program, you know, the Habit Tracker. We have a protein cheat sheet with a tutorial where I show you, hey, this is how you hit 150 grams of protein. Uh, What else do we have? We have a average weight tracker. There's a whole bunch of stuff there, a meal builder as well. So a lot of good stuff, weekly live training. So if you don't remember yet, I'll make sure to drop that link down below. And then I wish you an amazing week. Happy May. And then I'll talk to you very soon.